Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Okay na tayo. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Kayo po ay naka All right. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Ito po ang unang episode ng Usapang KP, Kalayaan sa Pamantasan. Marami na ho tayong mga guests na nag-sign up. We're expecting 1,500 plus participants dito po sa ating unang-unang episode. Ito po ay webinar series na ino-organize ng anim na grupo, University of the Philippines System, University of the Philippines Office of the Vice President for Public Affairs, the UP System Alumni Relations Office, the UP Information Technology Development Center, TVUP, at the UP Alumni Freedom Project. Kasama po doon yung mga naredtan. Okay? Before I start, let me introduce our co-moderator. E medyo talaga hong nakakahiya na kasabay ako dito no, sa panel na to. Pero si Mr. Jose Y. Dalisay Jr. o Butch Dalisay. Kilalang kilala po dahil labing-anim lamang ang kanyang palangka awards. Dalisay was born in Romblon pero... Lasal Green Hills ang kanyang elementary school, Philippine Science High School sa secondary school at UP Creative Writing. At nag-aral pa sa abroad dahil siya po ay uh, hindi lang kumlaude sa imaginative writing sa UP. Siya rin ho ay may MA from the University of Michigan in 1988 and a PhD in English from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee in 1991 bilang Fulbright Scholar. Medyo tatlong pung libro na po kanyang na nalimbag mula po 1984 and I think meron pang lima coming up. So siya rin po ay nagsulat ng mga script para kay Lino Broca at nabilang doon sa 100 most important writers of the Philippines ano po doon sa National Cultural Center of the Philippines Centennial Honors List. So without further ado, Professor Butch, introduce natin yung ating mga panelists. Uh, magandang hapon, Malu, at maraming salamat sa, sa inyong lahat. Dadagdag ko lang, maritiradong profesor na rin ako sa UP. Kaya uh, ang ating mga kakasama natin ngayon ay mga kasama ko rin sa tinatawag namin Oblation Forum at ipapaliwanag ko yan uh, mamaya. Ano? Uh, sa sinamang palad, hindi natin makakasama ngayon si uh, Professor Maris Jokno sapagkat uh, siya ay may... Uh, kaunting kapansanan ngayong araw. Subalit, pasama naman natin ngayon ang dalawa nating uh, mga kaibigan sa pamantasan, uh, si Professor Emeritus uh, Solita Monsod, na inyo sigurong mas kilala bilang uh, Maring Winnie. Uh, she, of course, is an icon in, in Philippine uh, economics and Philippine uh, media, probably equally so. Uh, she was uh, the former uh, Social Economic Planning Secretary and Director General of, of NEDA during the time of President uh, Cory Aquino. Uh, but she has also been uh, with the University of the Philippines since 1960, 1963. No, 71. <laughs> as, as 71 pa lang pala. Okay, 71. <laughs> and... Uh, UP, of course, is where she got her uh, BA in economics, uh, cum laude, and proceeding to the University of Pennsylvania for her graduate studies. Uh, she is now uh, also a professor emeritus of economics at the UP School of Economics. And again, most of you know her for her work in, in media, for which she has received a slew of awards. She has hosted uh, Palaban with Malub Mangahas and uh, Miriam Kambao. And she writes a bi-weekly column, which you probably read uh, faithfully uh, in the Philippine Daily Inquirer, Get Real. So ito po si Maring Winnie na kasama natin ngayong hapon. And she will be uh, uh, accompanied by another very distinguished uh, professor emeritus, Gisela or Giselle Concepcion. Uh, one of our leading researchers and professors from the marine science Institute. She is a, an academician of the National Academy of Science and Technology. She has a PhD in chemistry from, from UP. 
and her research interests include marine nat natural products, biochemistry, and the development of bioscreening methods. Si Giselle po ay isa sa mga taong gumupunta sa dagat upang maghanap ng mga lunas sa limbawa sa, sa mga sakit natin tulad ng cancer. From 1977-1997 to 1999, she was the president of the Philippine Society of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, and she also was past president of the Philippine American Academy of Science and Engineering, which helped raise about 500 million pesos for the National Science Complex and many more millions for our MS and PhD programs in the sciences. Okay. Yun ang dalawang ang dalawa nating tampok na speakers ngayong hapon. Okay. Siguro malu introduce mo yung ating mga uh, reactors. Okay. So para lang ho sa mga naging estudyante nitong mga teacher na to, no? Ang atin pong episode ngayon eh mga terror teachers, hindi terrorista. Kasi ho parang palagay ko kahit naka o naka ko kayo, eh ngayon na yung pagtatapat, ano po. Pero may reactors pa tayo na ganun din ang category, medyo astig po. Si Attorney Theodore Ted Te was Assistant Court Administrator and Chief of the Supreme Court Public Information Office. Si Teddy Te, para sa mga journalists, obtained his law degree from the University of the Philippines in 1990 and a Master's of Law degree from Columbia University in New York. Before joining the Supreme Court, he focused on human rights and public interest law as a member of the Free Legal Assistance Group, the oldest human rights organization of lawyers in the country. Si Attorney Te it was, is a tenured member of the faculty of the University of the Philippines teaching criminal law and remedial law from 20, 2000 to 2012. Toim awardee po si Attorney Te in 2002 for legal aid and human rights. He was formerly director of the UP College of Law Office of Legal Aid and vice president for legal affairs of the University of the Philippines system. Medyo terror din ho bigatin yung susunod na reactor pero medyo bata din katulad ni Attorney Te. Si Dr. Javani Gani Tapang is the dean of the College of Science. Siya po ay may doctor of philosophy in physics from UP in 2002. At ang kanyang academic group ay eh, Instrumentation Physics Laboratory. Medyo alien po ito sa mga taga-social sciences. Ang fields of interest po niya, synchronization, biology, and optics. Marami pong awards na nakuha na si Dean Gani, katulad nung Visser Versatile Instrumentation System for Science, Education, and Research. At siya po ay naging national winner at regional winner din ng NCR for Gawad Sancelor, pinakamahusay at nanilathalang pananaliksik. So siya rin po eh, naging author, co-author nung isang uh, libro, Texting Styles and Information Change of SMS Text Messages in Filipino. Palagay ko yung ating mga netizens yung magiging interested. Makinig kay Dr. Gani. Welcome po, Dr. Gani. At ang panghuli, pero hindi ho naman talaga matatawaran din. Siya po ay dean ngayon ng Lyceum of the Philippines University College of Law. Pero batang UP. Si Attorney Maria Soledad o Sol Margarita de Riquito Mawis was chairperson of the Philippine Association of Law Schools and is now a member of its board of trustees. Ms. Attorney Mawis is a part of a law office na siya po ay isang senior partner. And she handles case litigation in criminal law, corporation law, and civil law, particularly those involving family law. Law professor din po siya sa Adamson University College of Law and is a corporate secretary of the Breaking the Yoke of Poverty and member of the Women Lawyers Circle o yung WILOC. Isa pong mahalagang grupo din dito ng ating mga alumni from the College of Law. She graduated cum laude from UP, AB Political Science, and the uh, 15th in her law class at the UP. She writes a column also, Property Rules for the Inquirer, and is the co-author of a book on family law. May dagdag po tayong, ano ko, no? Uh, kasama. Mamaya magsasalita, tatawagin natin galing sa kapitbahay natin sa Katipunan. Bilang kinatawan ni Dean Luis Dumlao, chairperson of the Institute for Social Entrepreneurship in Asia, 
and Dean of the John Gokongway School of Management at the Ateneo de Manila University. Siya po ay may kinatawa na pinadala dahil may conflict of schedule, si Ms. Anna Tan, Director of the Ateneo Center for Social Entrepreneurship o ACCENT. Siya po ay nandito rin ngayon at mamaya tatawagin natin. So may UP, may Lyceum, may Ateneo. Okay, Professor Butch, <laughs> let's roll the red carpet na for ating mga terror. All right. Uh, kasi nga, uh, Malu, nitong mga nakaraang araw o, o linggo, uh, madalas na pag-uusapan yung tinatawag na academic freedom. Kaya natin binuo itong panel na to para pag-usapan kung ano ba talagang klaseng, uh, ano ba yan, uh, anong klaseng laman o hayop o ano, itong academic freedom, anong ibig sabihin nito? At uh, bakit importante ito sa buhay ng isang ang isang pamantasan tulad ng tulad ng UP ngunit hindi lang UP no? hindi lang hindi lang public schools private schools uh, lahat tayo ay ay uh, may interest dito sa academic freedom pero ilan ba talaga sa atin ang nakakaunawa kung kung ano ito okay. saan ba nagsimula itong ideya na to at uh, what are the corresponding let's say responsibilities that come with academic freedom Puro freedom lang ba yan? O may mga limitasyon din ba yan? Saan nanggagaling ang mga, ang mga threats sa academic freedom? Okay. Bakit ito natitreaten? At ano ang sinasabi ng batas tungkol sa academic freedom? Kaya tayo may mga kasama rin mga abogado ngayon. Ano? Uh, so we will go through the whole gamut of, of considerations surrounding academic freedom and And we will begin by asking our distinguished uh, panelists uh, today, uh, our professors uh, Emeritai, uh, Professor uh, Monsod, and Professor uh, Concepcion, to give us uh, some preliminary remarks about what they think academic freedom is, how it operates, and why it's important to, to the life of a university and of a nation. Siguro we'll start with, with uh, Professor uh, Winnie Monsod. Magandang hapon po. Good afternoon, Butch. Good afternoon, Malu, Giselle. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't see Ted, Teddy Te here, so I, uh, I cannot greet him uh, properly. Ben, Botita, kumakaway. Kumakaway, kumakaway ba siya? Bakit hindi ko nakikita? Ah, baka oh. naka <laughs> full frame kayo. Uh, so, okay. Let me see. No. Okay, well, let me start. I mean, you know, curiously enough, I, I started my, my discussion, what I thought was going to be a discussion, by giving the definitions. I always start with definitions, all right? Eh, yung ano yung pinag-uusapan natin when we're talking about academic freedom? First, from the Supreme Courts of the United States, at saka, I think, ginaya lang ng Pilipinas, but don't, uh, I, you know, Correct me if I'm wrong. Academic freedom means that a university can, and I quote, determine for itself on academic grounds who may teach, what may be taught, how it should be taught, and who may be admitted to study. Uh, excuse me, um, uh, do you want me to continue? Yes, please. Okay, I mean, I, I have no idea. You know, you just invited me three days ago, ha? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Talagang nakakainis ito. Well, you know. So, I went to my good old Encyclopedia Britannica. I, I consider it the best of the best. And the Britannica says that uh, academic freedom is the freedom of teachers and students to teach, study, pursue knowledge, and research without unreasonable interference or restriction from law, institutional regulations, or public pressure. Mm -hmm. Its basic elements include the freedom of teachers to inquire into any subject that evokes their intellectual concern, to present their findings to their students, colleagues, and others, to publish their data and conclusions without control or censorship, importante yan, and to teach in the manner they consider professionally appropriate. For students, 
naman, the basic elements include the freedom to study uh, subjects that concern them and to form conclusions for themselves and express their opinions. At saka, tinignan ko pa ang vision paper ni Chancellor uh, Fidel Namenso. No, ha? Ang sabi niya, academic freedom includes the freedom to challenge orthodoxies and established ways of thinking and acting without fear of repression or punitive action. This freedom is essential for the life of the mind. This is now coming into UP. And for UP's dual role as A, knowledge producer, and B, social critic. We play the role of social critic from a position of evidence-based scholarship and moral courage. This role should be recognized as a duty to the nation. And then, naman, so we're saying, is this academic freedom, you know, just for the benefit of teachers and students? Ah, no. The justification for academic freedom, and I quote, lies not in the comfort or convenience of teachers and students, but in the benefits to society. How did society get involved there? Ah, oh, well, the long-term interests of society are best served when the educational process leads to the advancement of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And knowledge is best advanced when the inquiry is free from restraints by the state, by the church, other institutions, or by special interest groups. Unquote. And that's from the, I think that's from the Brit <clears throat> Britannica. Now, the quest, the point is, and, and, and this we have to thank Butch Dalisay for giving us this reference. This academic freedom is not unlimited. One, that does not mean that a faculty member can harass, threaten, intimidate, rid ridicule, <laughs> impose his or its views on, st on students. Two, student academic freedom does not deny faculty members the right to require students to master course materials and the fundamentals of the disciplines that they teach. Marami yan. Neither academic freedom nor tenure re protects an incompetent teacher from losing his or her job. Or academic freedom does not protect fa faculty members from co colleague or student challenges to or disagreement with their educational philosophy uh, and practices. Tapos meron pang academic freedom does not protect faculty members, obviously, from non-university penalties if they break the law. Mm -hmm. Academic freedom does not give students or faculty the right to ignore college or university regulations. It does not protect students or faculty from disciplinary action, but it requires that they deserve fair treatment and due process. Uh, the last two are, is that academic freedom does not protect faculty members from sanctions for professional misconduct. And neither uh, academic freedom nor tenure protects a fa faculty member from various other sections. In other words, it is not uh, uh, limited. Uh, it's not unlimited. Okay. And paano ba yan start ang academic freedom? Ayan. You know, the movement of academic freedom started when universities started in the 13th century. I, I apologize to the historians, please. This is a, a little history lang. It first arose in response against strictures imposed by the Catholic Church. And when the Protestant Church uh, arose, they too had strictures. Then in the 18th and early 19th century, iba naman ang threat. The newly emerged European nations, that was the ch chief threat to academic freedom. Kasi professors were subject to government authority and were liable to be allowed to teach only what was acceptable to the government in power. Does mm -hmm. that ring bells with you? <laughs> and then in 1811, bah, the University of Berlin came out. Basic principles of excuse me if I don't pronounce this correct, Lehrfreiheit, the freedom yeah. to teach, and Lernfreiheit, freedom to learn, co-firmly established, and that became the model, the inspiration 
for universities in Europe and America. 1811 pa yan, ano, ha? And then, but it hasn't all been roses since then. Because in the 20th century, 1932, 1945, Germany, which was talagang the, you know, the cradle of academic freedom, academic freedom was totally eclipsed in Germany. Madaling ma Ma, 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 mamatay ang academic freedom in Nazi under, under the Nazi rule. In the 1950s naman, uh, I mean, America was supposed to be the bastion also of academic freedom. 1950s, academic freedom na, na, na ano ito, sila, natuyo sila during the anti-communist hysteria in the United States. That sounds again familiar. Anti-communist hysteria in the United States. This is what is called the McCarthy period. Example, you know, professors were required to take loyalty oaths by the universities, you know, that they were not uh, communists, etc. And they were dismissed without due process when they refused, when they refused to do this. This is 1950. That's 70 years ago, okay. mga kapatid. And the present, what is happening now in the Philippines brings the McCarthy period in the United States very much to mind. What do you mean? Why? Who is our, who is our McCarthy? Well, there's, there's General Parlade and maybe <laughs> Secretary Lorenzana. And in the Senate, we have, naku, thank God na lang, ano, ha? that it is Bato del Rosario. Why do I thank God? Well, because What's he doesn't that? have the wits to, to do it. Never mind. That is very bad of me. Anyway, and and uh, so what are we going to do? You know, what are we going to do about this? Well, we have to think. Number one, ang sa akin, you know, you we I know that we organized. You organized this webinar because the faculty really doesn't have. Not, not many faculty really have uh, the, well, have the patience or the time or even the willingness to learn about academic freedom or you take it for, uh, you take it for granted. Well, this has to change and this webinar is a huge step in the right direction. And, you know, we must internalize that academic freedom does not stand alone in support of the higher education system. We have to internalize, and I'm taking this from Carrie Nelson's book, uh, No University is an Island, Saving Academic Freedom. We must internalize that academic freedom and shared governance and tenure are three legs in the footstool that supports the higher education system. That's the first thing we have to do. We've got to educate the faculty, ourselves, ourselves, you know, I mean, I had to do a lot of reading for, for, for this webinar, <laughs> all right? So yeah, we, we've all got to learn about it. And ito ang aking kwan, uh, ito ang aking pambato. We really have to think seriously about organizing ourselves into a Philippine Association of University Professors or Philippine Association of University Teachers, a la the American Association of University Professors or the Canadian Association of University Teachers. Why? Because the American Association of University Professors is more than 100 years old. It's about 105, 105 years old. There, in unity, there is strength. In union, there is strength. And I'm further suggesting that the professors emeriti of the UP, led by Butch Dalisay, can lead the way. <laughs> I, I am very serious about it. Because, yes. you know, maybe in a university, when, it, when a particular university is under attack, maybe their faculty, you know, gets so afraid. But a union that is more than just a university, but a combination of universities is a much stronger uh, uh, organization to deal with. You know, we have, 
we have to see the need. We have to, to we have the need to create something permanent. We cannot we cannot just have episodal collective action like we are doing now. Diba? Episodal collective action ito eh. Mm-hmm. Let's let's make it short permanent so that we we have institutional memory, etc. And and uh, this episodal collective action is, by the way, Nelson's term. And there are lots of threats to academic freedom, not just the military. There's threats from the corporation, you institutionalization. The, you you realize that when 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 the business organizations try to tell us what to teach our students because it is what is marketable. That is an infringement of ac- academic freedom. And the, and the uh, uh, agencies and the departments that don't have uh, marketable, marketable uh, skills are, are uh, left hanging out to dry. We cannot allow that. The, even globalization, even the IMF's uh, strictures on, on, on uh, creating uh, what do you call this universities are, are involved in this. We have to, the, Carrie Nelson lists down 16 threats mm-hmm. to, to, to academic freedom. And, you know, here we are faced with the threats from the military. Nako, mas marami pa yan. All right. But we have to deal, of course, with the military now. So that's my second. A Philippine Association of uh, Philippine, I know, Professors. Pro- prof- Philippine University Professors Association, yeah. PUPA. Philippine <laughs> Association, uh, Philippine University Teachers Association. Nako, hindi pwede yon. You know? <laughs> but it is a very serious concept and I think we should, it's time for us to take the lead. Okay. And the third is that as part of governance, this is looking into ourselves. We have to review our procedures to determine whether they can improve, be improved. The grievance procedures by students and by teachers, we have to look at it before, you know, we have to take out the, what is it, the sty in our eye before we look at the sty in other people's eyes. That's it. All right. Ang feedback, Prof uh, Butch and Prof Winnie, hmm. amazing. Oh. Anong amazing? Ba? Oh, amazing daw kayo, tita. Uh, <laughs> thank you daw for the historical background and clear definitions. I think... Okay. Uh, and ako, thank you, my darlings. Uh-oh. At uh, I think the, the suggestions are well taken. Sige, Prof Butch, our next speaker. Talagang, Butch, a fire brand, ano, si Tita Winnie. Daig, yes. tayo, daig kayo ng tita ko. Oh, maraming maraming salamat kay Professor Winnie para sa kanyang napakalinaw na introduction dito sa ating topic. At doon sa mga nag- uh, nag-iisip na baka puro teorya lang itong pinag-uusapan natin, uh, ipapaalala ko lang na noong panahon ng batas militar, talagang may mga pumapasok na militar sa, sa faculty center namin sa UP at uh, you know they, they were dragging people out and arresting people right and left. Hindi ka makapasok noon sa campus na hindi tumitigil yung bus ninyo para umakyat yung mga yung mga militar para tingnan kung sino-sino diyan sa mga nakasakay ang mga ang mga insurrecto ano Pero And, alam mo Butch at okay. the same time the military was sending so many students to UP to study to to improve That's right <laughs> You, you, you know what I mean? So you, it's two phases that one they want to repress and the other they want to take advantage of our academic excellence so yeah. that their graduates, uh, I mean, you have, to, you have to give that to them also. That's right. Opo. And, and in fact, we, we should probably stress na yung, mili- yung militar ay hindi naman talaga dapat kaaway dito kundi kasama natin in, in nation building kung nagkakaunawaan tayo at nagre-respeto sa mga katapatang isa't isa. Oh, Ngayon siguro tumuli naman, tumuli naman tayo kay, uh, kay uh, Dr. Giselle Concepcion. Uh, she comes from a background in, in scientific research. So it's, I think it's very important for us to, to see how academic freedom ties into that, to that culture and, and why academic freedom is absolutely necessary even in the, in the silence of a laboratory. Uh, 
Professor Giselle, uh, yeah. please. Maraming salamat, uh, P.E. Butch and um, Madam Winnie. Mm. I research ko rin yung New World Encyclopedia for the <laughs> definition of academic freedom pareho nung uh, what you said. So gusto ko lang dagdagan at uh, uh, to distinguish between individual academic freedom, so faculty uh, academic freedom, student academic freedom, and the way they sometimes, uh, you know, uh, con conflict, pero uh, there are ways to uh, fix that. And then yung pinatawag na institutional autonomy. So yung institutional autonomy, let's just remember that the institution has a hierarchical structure. Ibig sabihin sa university, meron tayong uh, departments or institutes, tapos meron tayong mga kolehyo, tapos meron tayong uh, uh, constituent units, and each of these have uh, governing officials, tapos yung highest uh, governing body natin, yung Board of Regents. So, siyempre, dapat nating talakayin yung academic freedom within this uh, institutional structure. Pero uh, let me... Um, also give a background on the history of uh, academics and academic freedom. And I go back to the time of uh, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. And I don't know if P.E. Uh, Dodong Namenso is here, pero ayaw na ayaw niya yung meritocracy at aristocracy na yan. No? Pero sa katotohanan lang, yung mga, uh, nung panahon na yon B.C., eh, yung mga pinakamagagaling na mga uh, youth Eh, na hindi maturuan ng kanila mga biological parents, they were naturally attracted to uh, these learned men who were philosophers. Okay? So, nag-form ngayon ang tinatawag ng concept of academia or academy. Ngayon, nung panahon ni Socrates, purus question and answer, uh, uh, philosophia, pero nung uh, dumating na kay Plato tapos kay Aristotle, ayan na, nag-uumpisa na ngayon yung siyensya, yung uh, part of science na empirical. So uh, we remember na si Aristotle, maraming alam na tungkol sa nature. no So anyway, uh, fast forward ngayon to uh, the uh, uh, medieval um, uh, Europe. And uh, on behalf of the scientists and engineers here, the basic and... Uh, uh, foundational sciences of biology, chemistry, physics, uh, of course, uh, uh, mathematics, uh, the handmade of science, and now the applied sciences in uh, health, agriculture, and the engineering sciences. I'd like to um, point out uh, what is historically relevant. Nung panahon ni Copernicus, who said that, uh, you know, uh, it's heliocentric. Hindi tayo ang center of the universe. Hindi naman siya na persecute at the time. Okay? Ang na-persecute ng gusto, si Galileo Galilei. Diba? And sino nag-persecute sa kanya? Siyempre yung uh, simbahan. So he was persecuted uh, through the Inquisition. So anyway, yun yung I think uh, most blatant example of uh, the suppression of academic freedom or the freedom to to know or to um, pursue knowledge okay, during that time. And then all else, yun ang mga kinuwento ni Madam Winnie. Okay, now may I move to the why? And I'm wondering whether uh, Rika and uh, PEGG will allow me to share some slides, which I requested before this. Uh, Madam Winnie, ako two days notice lang ako. Okay. <laughs> ako two days notice, maari ba ako mag-share? Opo. Sige po. Maraming maraming salamat at uh, medyo ano lang agad-agaran eh ma in tayo sa tinatawag nating issues dito sa universidad natin no Okay so I always use these slides and some of our faculty remember me uh, saying or these things like over and over again parang sobrang ano na broken record universitas thinking tatawa na naman si PEGG diyan ayan na naman si Giselle open minded thinking and i say that is universitas thinking because there's so much to know uh, in the world and we scientists and engineers are concerned about knowledge not only of ourselves but of the world around us okay so we seek knowledge knowledge is growing in leaps and bounds and no single individual possesses sufficient knowledge to address the challenges and problems in society. And we know already our role in the university because we're supposed to be select. We were selected 
assuming we were the good students of UP, so nag-select na by UPCAT. Tapos, a certain number of us stayed on in the university and gained our competence and extra expertise in our uh, respective fields. No? And that gave us the right or the right to uh, mentor, to educate, to teach the best and brightest of the next generation. And it goes on and on. Okay. And so um, actually that's how uh, cultures and civilizations in the world uh, were created and how they they, they they persist. But in the university, we are agents for progressive change. We are, uh, you said, social critics because we are supposed to uh, pursue knowledge uh, without uh, boundaries, without restrictions, in an unencumbered and in an enabling environment. Okay, individuals of complementary interests and expertise should come together to seek and create more knowledge. And then these ones, I hope um, all scientists, even social scientists, surely will recognize a 3D graph. And I say, this is just the real world of time and space. And each of us actually studies uh, nature and ourselves in different uh, scales of time and space. And when you say log, you know, that's tenfold. No? So yung iba mag-aaral ng mga mikrobyo, yung iba mag-aaral naman ng geological uh, movements, iba-iba ng geolog geological uh, time and space from microbial space. No? Now, this uh, list here is for an anthropology centric view of knowledge, not always referred to the man, the human, family, community, society, na nation, world. But if we were uh, not to be anthropometric and say, uh, centric and say that uh, it's man and the rest of nature, ito naman yung kanya mga katumbas. And we say this is growing in leaps and bounds. Now, in the context, so why do we enjoy academic freedom? Because there's so much for us to uh, uh, learn through all our disciplines. And now we're coming together and uh, engaging in what we call interdisciplinary research and creative work. Now comes the UP Charter. That's a law, okay? mandate as a national university. And uh, I know our lawyers uh, will tell us about this, but ito naman yung price for academic freedom. Ito naman yung ating duties and responsibilities. With rights comes responsibilities. Ang laka-laka ng, laka -laka ng responsibilidad natin. No? We are to uh, serve as a graduate university, serve as a research university, and lead as a public service university. Okay? So, um, uh, hindi lang tertiary level education. Uh, it means postgraduate um, uh, education means may kasamang research and creative work or generation of new knowledge. Now, one qualification, yung bang freedom uh, to uh, pursue knowledge is the same, academic freedom is the same as freedom to express uh, this knowledge. Well, it's depend. it depends, no? So my own view is it depends because you are supposed to write and speak about your area of expertise. And then the way we do it in science and engineering, we allow our peers to um, um, evaluate, peer evaluate our work. So we have enough humility to allow uh, our science to be uh, published and uh, see what the reactions are of the whole world, of our uh, fellow experts in the field. Okay, so I think that's so important. There could be a freedom of expression as a component of academic freedom, we would be speaking about our areas of expertise. That's my view. Okay, so this, these are the mandates of our university and uh, they're intersecting. So our, um, I think, major or queen mandate would be uh, generating new knowledge through our research and creative work. And in this way, we lead, we lead, okay? But then, that research and creative work can enrich or can infuse so much new knowledge in our teaching and mentoring. And that is really our bread and butter. It is our living. We are, we were teachers. I mean, I'm also retired already. So this was, this was our, you know, livelihood, main livelihood. But then also we said, we also want to uh, be relevant to society. And the best way to be relevant to society is to find new solutions 
to the uh, existing problems and challenges that exist in society. And that would be from the fruits of our research and creative work. So what we're going to do is trying to merge all of them to integrate them even better, okay? Now, uh, the other why of academic uh, freedom, I would think is something that we came up. So the way we look at academics is like a complex system. So this is from a scientist's perspective. It's a whole environment, a whole milieu. And there are so many players on the left side. You have the students and faculty, you have the administrators. And this is where I'd like to point out that, um, you know, um, you'd say academic freedom to determine your administrators is very, very important. Why? Because uh, you want the administrator of a college or of an institute to uh, provide the enabling environment for its uh, faculty and its students in the, uh, uh, in the uh, engaging in their functions of teaching, education, mentoring, research, creative work, and public service. So the person who leads a unit of the university must be someone who's been well-trained uh, to lead that particular institute. And you know, um, years back, we actually got a grant from the Temasek Foundation and uh, National University of Singapore, and it was supported by the CHED. And it was this dual program which, emphas which emphasized that we must really uh, train our academic uh, administrators to support our faculty and students. It is called the Develop Developing University Leaders uh, and educators program, the doula program. So that's very, very important. So here you see uh, the, uh, the mandate of the university. There you have the physical infrastructure and facilities that will allow us to do our jobs well. And uh, I'd like to point out another administrative thing that, you know, it's very relevant now because uh, now in the university, we are able to teach, we're able to teach online during this time of COVID. But then uh, we had what we called the EUP and the EUP was a little bit controversial, but then again, now everything has really got to be electronic or online in terms of um, uh, getting uh, uh, the faculty data, getting the student data, getting say uh, financial data and also the procurement uh, process, okay? So technology has a way of liberating us of allowing us to pursue more knowledge because we, we become more efficient. So what are the uh, stops or the breaks or the restrictions to our academic freedom? It's really this, it's, it's our responsibility and duty to get this big arrow to move forward so that we can be of a significant public service uh, for the rest of uh, Philippine society and the rest of the world. And we say that this is overall uh, for the long-term higher, greater good, which we should be assessing every now and then. And so we have all these uh, arrows that move to the left and they are really feedback loops. And you will see that we are in a kind of a boundary here. Academics, that's in the green boundary. And then we have, of course, uh, the governance structures. And then outside, we would have our alumni, our government, our private sector, and we'd say that they're just feeding in into our academics and uh, our, uh, you know, ability to pursue knowledge uh, in this enabling, liberating, uh, unencumbered environment of academic freedom. What are some of the things that they're doing now? And I'm almost like speaking uh, on behalf of VP Sinch. Uh, I don't know if she's here, but surely, uh, you know, this has been tough. Again, through technology, you're able to continue the, uh, doing the mandate of the UP, which is to educate the best and brightest through online or remote teaching and learning, a part together program that's been so challenging, but I believe it's working very well. And uh, I believe that, um, uh, UP's academic reputation has been responsible for its rise in the ranks. Not that ranks are so important, they are it's just, just a proxy for quality in the university. But I think it's remarkable, our rise in the ranks 
is truly remarkable. And I know that a lot of it has to do with the quality of our tertiary level education. And also now we have a growing number of uh, publications that are very uh, well received and cited and are becoming very influential in the world. And this is uh, again to emphasize what I was saying earlier about freedom of expression. So if your expression is through your publications, then um, you, you can say that it is peer reviewed by international and local experts, then you stand by it. Now, if you're going to speak up in other ways or other fora, maybe, maybe uh, you have to be more careful about that. And this is all now cataloged in this uh, uh, catalogs of research and creative work. And I never forget, I never forget uh, the accomplishments of the UP Press, because here you have the publications of our faculty uh, in uh, the arts, uh, humanities and social sciences. And I always keep telling uh, UP director, uh, uh, press director, Neil Garcia, that this is very, very, very impressive, okay? So um, public good and public service. I like uh, to look at this, uh, you know, uh, public good and public service, which were the components of the social contract of the previous administration, uh, which I believe was, were being pursued by the current administration. But what I always say is what they lack was this part, a clear statement on the role of education, K-12, to uh, K-12 to tech book, general higher uh, education and creative work, research and innovation to input into all of these interdisciplinary public goods or public uh, service goods. And uh, to capture that, we have in the university what we call emerging interdisciplinary research uh, that has produced a lot of output aside from the ones that have been funded by the government. Like DOSD is a major funder of uh, our project, so is DA. And so how are we going to implement their projects if we do not uh, uh, enjoy a space of academic freedom to do our research and creative work? So what I'm saying is, I think uh, we would have to protect and further strengthen academic freedom in the university just so we can fulfill our duties and responsibilities as a national university. And further, uh, in a UP knowledge paper, we came up with this. It's not enough for UP CUs to do the work. Uh, there are regions in the country where we need uh, to align and collaborate with other leading SUCs and other sectors of society. Okay, so uh, I think that um, uh, I view academic freedom in this uh, context. And uh, in my next chance to speak, I'll just tell you what I know of scientists and engineers in the UP who have contributed significantly to society through their projects, through their initiatives, through their res early response efforts, including those during this time of COVID and um, uh, for other, other quite controversial projects of uh, you know, the rest of society. So thank you very much for this time uh, to speak. Marami ho tayong mga naka-line up ng questions. Sana po, pero pagbibigyan nating daan yung ating mga reactors. But before that, let me acknowledge quickly the participants who had come in already para lang may idea po kayo sino yung ating ka-engage ngayong araw na to. Galing Nueva Ecija, Iloilo, uh, San Pablo, Cavite, Los Baños, Laguna, Caloocan, Cebu, Saudi Arabia, Pampanga, New Jersey, Sacramento, USA, Binyang Laguna, of course, Quezon City, Angeles City, Bongao, Tawi-Tawi, Maykawayan, Fairview, Malabon, Zamboanga, Iligan City. Marami pong nag-participate ano? at meron po tayong parang 1,500 yung nag-register but we're live on YouTube as well as on Facebook. At nasa uh, room din ho ang atin pong UP, Pres UP Chancellor for Diliman, Fidel Limenso, at ang atin pong mga dating UP officials si uh, President former President Emerlinda Roman at Vice President Emino Abad. Okay, uh, Prof. Butch, uh, tingnan natin ngayon yung ating reactors. We have uh, two gentlemen and a lady. Yeah. Si Professor, uh, sino po mauna natin, Prof. Butch? 
Uh, siguro si Attorney Ted Muna. Okay. Uh, uh, but there, there's a kind of a general question I'd like to throw at them, okay. uh, following through on the discussions. If, if, if academic freedom sounds so good, bakit tayo nagkaka problema dito? Why isn't this just uh, accepted or adopted by, by everybody? Bakit kailangan pa nating pag-usapan kung ano ito, kung ano yung hindi ito, at mga limitasyon ito, and, and, and so on. So maybe we'll ask, uh, we'll ask uh, Attorney Ted uh, to, okay. to go first and approach this possibly from a, from a legal point of, of view. How does the state, Philippine state, look at academic freedom? Okay, good afternoon. Uh, maraming salamat, Butch and, and Malu. Sige, I, I, let me try to answer that by, again, like uh, Ma'am Winnie and uh, Doc Giselle uh, providing a definition. No? Uh, allow me to just uh, share a few slides to, to do that. This is for context. This is a set of questions that I extracted from an actual case. And this, the, the relevance of the, 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 this set of questions and the, and the case will become, uh, will, will be revealed in a few minutes. No? So if you, I won't read the questions anymore. You can read them from the slides. No? But reading through them, they actually evoke a, you know, a profound sense of deja vu, right? These are things that we've been hearing <laughs> these are things that we've been talking about. No, these are these are this sounds like an interrogation uh, that is very very recent. Okay, now uh, where did this come from? This comes from a decision of the U.S. Supreme Court, actually from a concurring opinion of Justice Frankfurter of the U.S. Supreme Court, and he he gave the classic definition of of academic freedom, which. Uh, Ma'am Winnie quoted earlier, no? and uh, the, the set of questions were actually posed to this person, Sweezy. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the way it's pronounced, but I'll just pronounce it the way, it, uh, the way I read it. Sweezy, who, was, who gave several lectures, three lectures in three years in, before university. And of course, this was in the 1950s, at the height of the, of the Red Scare. And so he was, he was subpoenaed several times and asked, what did he talk about? What did he lecture about? And, and those, the, the questions that I gave earlier, those were actual questions that were asked of him, which he refused to answer, which he refused to answer. And so he was brought to court because of his refusal to answer, and it reached all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. In the, in the definition, in the, in the concurring opinion of Justice Frankfurter, he said, par partly, in a university, knowledge is its own end, not merely a means to an end. A university ceases to be true to its own nature if it becomes a tool of church or state or any sectional interest. A university is characterized by the spirit of free inquiry, its ideal being the ideal of Socrates, to follow the argument where it leads. This implies the right to examine, question, modify, or reject traditional ideas and beliefs. Dogma and hypothesis are incompatible, and the concept of an immutable doctrine is repugnant to the spirit of a university. The concern of its scholars is not merely to add and revise facts in relation to an accepted framework, but to be ever examining and modifying the framework itself. And this particular, uh, this particular formulation of Justice Frankfurter in his concurring opinion could be summarized in these four fundamental freedoms which he formulated. He said, academic freedom is, can be reduced to these four fundamental freedoms. Who may teach, what may be taught, how it shall be taught, and who may be admitted to study. Now, this particular uh, concurring opinion has already been incorporated into Philippine jurisprudence, and particularly in the 1987 Constitution. In the 1987 Constitution, the formulation of academic freedom is in Section uh, 5, Paragraph 2 of Article 14, and it says, academic freedom shall be enjoyed in all institutions of higher learning. And part of the records of the Constitutional Commission of 1986, upon uh, looking through the records, uh, one of the debates uh, covering this particular provision centered on what institutional academic freedom covers and who is entitled to ac academic freedom. And one particular uh, interpolation was between uh, 
former justice and now ret uh, retired and now field judge, Chancellor Adolfo Ascuna, and current CHR Commissioner Chito Gascon in the CONCOM. And uh, Chito Gascon's question uh, concerned uh, the academic freedom of all the sectors in, in a particular university, whether it is only reserved to the faculty or it, it is also enjoyed by other sectors of, of the university. And Justice Ascuna's answer was that it covers everyone. It covers everyone. And the, the formulation, the final formulation that they, they made was that it just says institutions of higher learning. And that is understood to cover everyone within that institution of higher learning. Now, Section 5, Paragraph 2 of Article 14 was interpreted by the Supreme Court in UP versus Ison, 1989. And this particular passage from that decision is, is important because it cites the concurring opinion of Justice Frankfurter in Sweezy, and it also cites former UP President Vicente Cinco. It is to be noted that the reference to academic freedom is to the institutions of higher learning as the recipients of this boon. It would, then, it would follow then that the school or college itself is possessed of such a right. It decides for itself its aims and objectives and how best to attain them. It is free from outside coercion or interference, save possibly when the overriding public welfare calls for some restraint. It, was, it has a wide sphere of autonomy, certainly extending to the choice of students. This constitutional provision is not to be construed in a niggardly manner or in a grudging fashion. That would be to frustrate its purpose, nullify its intent. And it continues, It is the business of a university to provide that atmosphere which is most conducive to speculation, experiment, and creation. It is an atmosphere in which, they, in which there prevail the four essential freedoms of a university, to determine for itself an academic ground who may teach, what may be taught, how it shall be taught, and who may be admitted to study. So the... The 1957 concurring opinion of Justice Frankfurter has actually found itself into Philippine jurisprudence, not only in this case, but in many, many cases involving ad academic freedom. But I wanted to highlight that as part of the, of, as part of the jurisprudence involving UP, this particular uh, right has also been affirmed. And as uh, VP, VP Giselle pointed out that in the UP Charter, it also has a distinct formulation of academic freedom. The national university, that's UP, has the right and responsibility to exercise academic freedom. So it is not simply that there is a right that sits there, but there is a responsibility. Otherwise, in, otherwise read, it, there is a duty to exercise academic freedom in the way that UP, for example, conducts its affairs. So. Just a snapshot, just three, just three instances where academic freedom, uh, let's say, of the UP has been, has been affirmed and what extent, to what extent that the freedom covers. Uh, UP versus Civil Service Commission, the court said, as part of its academic freedom, the University of the Philippines has a prerogative to determine who may teach its students. The Civil Service Commission has no authority to force it to dismiss a member of its faculty, even in the guise of enforcing civil service rules. Morales versus Board of Regents of the UP. Uh, this involved the granting of honors, and uh, the court said that uh, the Board of Regents has the competence and expertise to decide that, not the courts, not anyone outside the university. And the third uh, involves a, a student who had her, her uh, PhD revoked upon a showing of plagiarism. She sued for mandamus, and the court said mandamus does apply to compel the university to reinstate someone who in the university's determination had violated academic rules and enforcement of said rules had her degree revoked. Now, I'm sorry this is a very long this was a very long answer to Butch's very simple question, but just to frame that my answer to that, why is there such a big deal about academic freedom? I think within the particular context we find ourselves, it is really an assertion of control. Right? There, Within, within, the, within the University of the Philippines and within other universities, for example, academic freedom allows administrators, allows faculty, allows students, allows the constituents of a university some degree of control over what we want to read, what we want to say, what we want to think, how we want to think, and who we want to think with, discuss with, express ourselves with. And so 
that's I think that's the tension that gives rise to to where we are right now. You know, the assertion of some degree of control or authority. So maybe I'll just end there and give the other reactors a chance to say something. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Attorney Ted. See, Dean Gani, could we hear from you? Dean Gani, same question. Why is there such a big deal now? Bakit kailangan nilang lapastanganin o pigilan ng academic freedom ngayon? Dean Gani? <laughs> uh, I share ko lang din yung aking slides. Okay. Um, ito po ay isang hindi na ako naghanap ng malayo uh, hindi na ako pupunta kay Plato um, yung re mas recent po na um, 1950s uh, nakita ko ay si Einstein ay may sinabi na tungkol dito sa academic freedom um, maganda, siguro sa mga slides na ito ay makikita natin kung paano um, na, paano ito pwedeng talakayin at yung sagot doon sa tanong ni Butch kanina. Um, kay Einstein, di naman nagkaiba yung definition na diniscuss kanina nila uh, ng ating mga professors at Meriti at saka ni uh, Atty. Um, ang isang dagdag lang siguro, nangyari itong pagsagot ni Einstein, itong interview sa kanya, nung panahon na meron talagang matinding red scare doon sa Amerika at sa loob ng universidad ay naghahanap ng mga uh, komunista at pinapasalita ang mga uh, yung sag tinatanong nga ang mga uh, professors kung uh, ano ang kanilang political affiliation. Ngayon, importante siguro na, na ilagay dito yung, yung point sa ilalim na any restriction on academic freedom acts in such a way as to hamper the dissemination of knowledge among people and there, thereby impedes rational judgment and action. Hindi lang po sa loob ng universidad nagiging importante ang academic freedom kasi yung role din ng universidad para maglinaw, para magpakita ng katotohanan, para alamin kung ano ang katotohanan, nalilimit na ito pag nililimit na natin ang academic freedom. Uh, kagaya yeah. din po ito. Break lang po. Meron ho yata nakaharang na choose a theme sa inyong presentation. I'm sorry. Hindi lahat makita ng mga tao yung inyong... Uh, All right. Sorry po. Okay. Balik tayo kay Einstein. Ganito ko na lang po gagawin para mabilis oh, tayo. Uh, oh. Hindi ko na i-present para i-present mode para lang makita na lang ng lahat. Uh, uh, kagaya po nitong usapin actually na, um, na naging um, uh, recently naging importante na sa news uh, usapin for example ng um, DNR uh, criticizing UP uh, yung paghahanap ng sabulab ng AFP, uh, yung pagiging usapin din na paano ka ba pwedeng magawa ng fieldwork kung meron naman pala mga uh, threat dun sa mga field workers natin, kagaya na nangyari kay Leonard ko. Uh, kay, kay Einstein din naman po ay noong 1950s and it really sounds so uh, deja vu right now, um, na yung threat sa academic freedom sa panahon niya ay hindi rin nag-iba sa panahon natin ngayon na for some alleged reason at that time there was an external danger supposedly to the US freedom of teaching mutual exchange of opinions and freedom of press and other media of communication are enroached upon or obstructed so ginagamit ang isang rason para limitahan itong mga um, expression ito academic freedom at itong ibang mga karapatan na ito. At ang nagiging epekto nito ay marami ay hindi na nagbibigay na kanilang opinion kahit sa loob ng kanilang uh, private social life. Ito yung kinakatakot ni Einstein at that time na kung doon sa, sa isang lugar, sa isang institusyon kagaya ng universidad ay nililimitahan na nitong external factors yung pagkakaroon ng academic freedom, paano pa kaya ang epekto nito doon sa loob ng pag-iisip ng mga tao ng lipunan na pati doon ay matatakot sila magsalita at magkakaroon ng uh, epekto to sa, ating, sa isang demokrasya. Kagaya din, babalikan ko lang dito at paulit-ulit lang po itong slide na to. Uh, mahirap talaga na sasabihin lang ng isang, um, and I think this is really for us, the College of Science, a Um, academic freedom issue na sasabihin ng isang departamento na hindi namin papakinggan yung sinasabi nyo dahil bayaran kayo, dahil meron kaming ibang pagtingin 
uh, at iba pa. Uh, UP does these researches, the Marine Science Institute, the Institute of Biology, Environmental Science, uh, it, Actually, but they have a survey also that they do to our to our country. Yes, Bob. Sige po. Nagfalter lang. Um. Audio. For, yeah. For for Einstein as well. Um. I think this is more important for for us. Is actually. Ano ang role ng bawat isa sa atin, ng isang intellectual, ng miyembro ng UP community at ng lipunan dito. Uh, kailangan kasi talagang ipaglaban ng bawat isang mamayan, hindi lang yung ng isang institusyon ng UP, yung academic freedom, yung freedom natin para sa pag-iisip at iba pa. Uh, kasi kasama ito at magiging, import, magiging uh, real lang itong mga rights na ito kung, kung ito ay ipagpapatuloy natin the intellectuals in the widest sense of the world word are in a special position since they have thanks to their special training a particular strong influence in the formation of public opinion this is the reason why those who are about to lead, uh, lead us towards an authoritarian government are pat particularly concerned with intimidating and muzzling that group um, it starts with intimidating universities it starts with intimid uh, taking away academic freedom and afterwards those who could shape public opinion beyond facebook would actually be uh, lost for society and it is in our duty the intellectuals um, would actually have to uh, stand and refuse to cooperate with any undertaking that violates these constitutional rights um, the words of Einstein really sounds uh, so um, important right now, even after 50 years uh, has passed, because some, uh, it's a similar situation that we are in right now with regard to the threats to the university. Uh, lastly, of course, Einstein was talking about uh, how do you help uh, victims of political institutions? You actually support it. You actually, you actually stand up to them. And even if you're not the one being asked or being um, uh, put in the microscope, we should stand not only for our fellow intellectuals, but also for the university so that the uh, society could benefit for whatever academic freedom would be, give, would be uh, giving as benefits for society. Balikan ko lang po yung slide na ito. Um, maram, itong tatlong bagay na to na pinili ko, uh, may sagot naman ang kolehiyo, may sagot naman ang UP dito. Pero ganito po ang itsura ng iba't ibang itsura ng violations na sa academic freedom natin. Yung hindi tayo papakinggan at sasabihin, uh, bayaran naman kayo. Yung magbibigay ng allusion na meron sa bulab dito sa UP at gagamitin nyo na paraan para pumasok dito at sikilin yung pag uh, pagre-research natin. At yung threat doon sa ating mga field workers dahil pinagdududahan silang NPA dahil nandun sila sa bundok. Ito po ay mga pagsisikil doon sa spasyon na pwede nating pag-aralan yung lipunan, yung kapaligiran uh, at kung wala yung ganong luwag, kung wala yung ganong uh, freedom para mag-inquire ka, para magtanong ka Nawawala yung sinasabi kang ina na si Knight ni Attorney Te na yung atmosphere that is most conducive to speculation, to experiment, and to creation. Mawawala yung ganong klase at mawawala na rin yung talagang function ng university para maghanap ng bago, magharap, maghanap ng maganda, uh, at gumawa ng mga iba't ibang bagay na makakatulong sa lipunan. If we are unable to speak our mind, with intellectual honesty, what else would the university would be for us? It's not something that we just read the books and then quote-unquote learn from it. We actually learn and discover new things. And if we're unable to do this we, uh, because academic freedom is lost, then the university ceases to do its function for society. Maraming salamat po at paumanhin sa problema sa internet. Okay. 
Prof. Butch, mayroon pa ho tayong isang reactor tapos mag-open forum po tayo. Thank you, Dr. Gani. Si, si Dean Sol naman. Uh, uh, I, ang pag-aalam ko, si, si Dean Sol ay isang student leader no? bago siya pumasok sa pag-aaral ng batas. At uh, of course, naging kilalang uh, uh, lawyer na at ngayon ay isang educator din sa, sa batas. So please, uh, please proceed with your presentation, Dean, uh, Dean Mawis. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, Borch. Hi, Ma'am Malu. Hello. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. I will discuss and react on the statements issued by our professors, particularly the professors emeriti, when they said we draw particular attention to the need for acknowledging our faculty as the prime authority with regard to their disciplinal expertise and for this purpose to be respected in all matters of academic governance. This too is a basic element in the operationalization of academic freedom. I fully support the statement of our distinguished humanity. The protest against the unilateral abrogation of the UPDND Accord, not because I'm a graduate of this distinguished or great institution, but it is because it is consistent with law and jurisprudence. Bakit ba natin dapat pag-usapan ng academic freedom? Ano po bang epekto ng pagbawaksi ng UPD and the Accord sa academic freedom? Lalong-lalo na sa konteksto ng academic freedom sa Universidad ng Pilipinas. Kanina po, pinag-usapan po ng malalim ng mga ating kagalang-galang na presenters ang konsepto po ng academic freedom. Allow me to add some more and discuss the same in light of the abrogated UPD and the agreement and the red tagging issues. You know, our Philippine constitution has already spoken. Academic freedom is a constitutional right. Our constitution expressly provides section article 14, section five, academic freedom shall be enjoyed in all institutions of higher learning. Now in the case of versus the faculty admission committee, a case decided in 1975, the recognition in the constitution of institutions of higher learning enjoying academic freedom. It is more often identified with the right of a faculty member to pursue his studies in his particular specialty and thereafter to make known or publish the result of his endeavors without fear that retribution would be visited on him in the event that his conclusions are found distasteful or objectionable to the powers that be whether in the political, economic, or academic establishments. For the sociologist Robert McIver, it is a right claim by the accredited educator as teacher and as investigator to interpret his findings and to communicate his conclusions without being subjected to any interference, molestation, or penalization because these conclusions are unacceptable to some constituted authority within or beyond the institution. As for the educator and philosopher Sidney Hook, this is his version. What is academic freedom? Briefly put, it is the freedom of professionally qualified persons to inquire, discover, publish, and teach the truth as they see it in the field of their competence. It is subject to no control or authority except the control or authority of the rational methods by which their truths or conclusions are sought and established in these disciplines. In the case of Saludaga versus FEQ, FEQ, a case that was decided by the Supreme Court, citing another Supreme Court case, Philippine School of Business Administration versus Court of Appeals, the highest court of our land said, institutions of learning must always meet the implicit or built-in obligation of providing their students with an atmosphere that promotes or assists in attaining its primary undertaking of imparting knowledge. Certainly, no student can absorb the intricacies of physics or higher mathematics or explore the realm of the arts and other sciences when bullets are flying or grenades exploding in the air or when there looms around the school premises a constant threat to life and need. Necessarily, the school must ensure that adequate steps are taken to maintain peace and order within the campus premises and to prevent the breakdown thereof. Now, also in the Enbank case of Garcia versus the Faculty Admission Committee, 
Justice Frankfurter, with his extensive background in legal education as a former professor of the Harvard School of Law, referred to what he called the business of a university and the four essential freedoms in the following language. It is the business of a university to provide that atmosphere which is most conducive to speculation, experiment, and creation. It is an atmosphere in which there prevail the four essential freedoms of a university to determine for itself on academic grounds who may teach, what may be taught, and how it shall be taught, and who may be admitted to study. Now, how can the UP or our university provide, quote unquote, an atmosphere that promotes or assist in attaining its primary undertaking of imparting knowledge, when as a result of the abrogation of the UPDMD Accord, the military or police can now conduct operations, including clandestine ones inside UP campuses, since they are no longer obliged to first notify the UP administration of their activities. Or there is a possibility that non-uniformed personnel of the military and police can enter the campus premises and actually become the seatmates of our students, of our children. When there is no longer a need for prior notification to the UP president or chancellor of the campus or the dean of the regional unit regarding the service of search warrants to any UP student, faculty, employee, or invited participant in any UP activity. How can UP assure its academic community of atmosphere conducive to learning and the free flow of ideas, or when, in light of the unilateral abrogation of the UPD and the accord, a professor's critical thinking may be erroneously labeled and tagged as leftist with dire consequences. How can one feel safe to express his thoughts when there's a democracy sword hanging over their head? especially in light of the fact that an arresting officer is no longer obliged to report immediately to the UP admin, the arrest or detention of any student, faculty or employee anywhere in the Philippines, or there is no longer any basis to require the arresting officer to first notify the university administration before subjecting the members of the UP, UP community to custodial investigation. Now, in the concurring opinion of Supreme Court Justice Bernabe in the case of Pimentel versus Medialdea, that's a very recent one, academic freedom is anchored. She said, academic freedom is anchored on the recognition that academic institutions perform a social function and its business is conducted for the common good that is, it is necessary tool for critical inquiry of truth and its free exposition. Thus, the, the guarantee of academic freedom is complementary to the freedom of expression and the freedom of the mind. While it is true that freedom of expression is not an unbridled right because it can be subject to certain conditions and limitations, the free flowing ex exchange of ideas may be stifled if fear of even expressing them permeates the academic atmosphere. The sudden and unilateral abrogation of UPD and the accord does not reassure safety, but instead sows fear in the hearts of the professors and students, more so when it is done during the effectivity of the much discussed and feared anti terror law. And this is not an unfounded fear, it is felt. It happened, the red tagging happened, so it is a truism. As far as the professors are concerned, they should be given a wide latitude to express their beliefs without fear of retribution. Borrowing the language of the Supreme Court in the case of Son versus USD, the personal aspect of freedom consists in the right of each university teacher recognized and effectively guaranteed by society to seek and express the truth as he personally sees it, both in his academic work and in his capacity as a private citizen. Thus, the status of the individual university teacher is at least as important in considering academic freedom as the status of the institution to which they belong and through which they disseminate their learning. Actually, the UPD and the Accord recognizes the freedom of assembly and free speech are not unbridled rights that may be exercised with impunity since the accord clearly states that nothing in the agreement shall be construed as a prohibition against enforcement of the laws of the land. 
So why then abrogate? Why abrogate it when DNP is assured that it can still enforce the laws of the land inside the university, subject only to prior notice and coordination with the UP administration? Ang hinihingi lang naman po ay eh, konting courtesy. Kung papasok po tayo sa bahay ng isang tao, di ba kakatok po tayo? Hindi lang naman natin yung bubuksan. Eh. Konting pasintabi lang. Yun lang naman basically ang hinihingi ng university. So in fact, one is bound to us, given the UPD and the accord states, that nothing in the agreement should be construed as a prohibition against the enforcement of the laws of the land. What then is the basis of the Secretary in saying that the accord bars the police and military in providing effective security for the safety and welfare of its students, faculty, and, um, and members of the, uh, the academic community? We must remember that the protection to the cognate rights of speech and assembly guaranteed by the Constitution is similarly available to students is well taken in our jurisdiction. Thus, in the legal, le leading case of Malabanan versus Ramento, the court citing justice for us in Tinker versus, I will pronounce it the way I read it in the dictionary, Damwa Community School District, said that students do not shed their constitutional rights to freedom of speech or expression at the schoolhouse gate. And a student's right, therefore, do not embrace merely classroom hours. When he is in the cafeteria or in the playing field or on the campus during authorized hours, he may express his opinions, even on controversial ones of subjects like the conflict in Vietnam, or if he does so without materially and substantially interfering with the requirements of appropriate discipline in the operation of the school and without colliding with the rights of others. But but conduct by the student in class or out of it, which for any reason, whether it stems from time, place, or type of behavior, materially disrupts classwork or involves substantial disorder or invasion of the rights of others is of course, not immunized by the constitutional guarantee of freedom of speech. While the secretary said that DNB has no intention to assign military and police personnel inside UP campuses, nor will it suppress activism, academic freedom, and freedom of expression. The recent tagging is the anathema to his verbal assurances. Consistency in words and actions is the best gauge of good faith and transparency. If in the words of the secretary, the military and the police are willing to reach out to the youth and provide them with another perspective on the nation and society, and see the military and police as protectors worthy of everybody's trust and not to be feared. Let UP and DNB sit down, mutually revisit the accord, then DNB and UP, and UP therefore must act in good faith. DNB therefore, not even UP, can act without factual or legal basis to unilaterally turn its back on its own agreement. I am a product of the University of the Philippines. Well, long years. Hindi ho ako pa ulit ulit. Four years UPIS. <laughs> three and a half. Tama ho ba yung aking math ko? Three and a half AB Political Science. Four years UP College of Law. Hindi pala, 11 and a half years pala yan. Kaya talaga mahina talaga po ako sa math. Now, I am back in UP. I am teaching also as a professional lecturer in the College of Law. Now, during those years, of course, nagbasa po talaga ho ako. Nag-aral po talaga ako. Pero naging miyembro din po ako ng Samasa. Naging miyembro din po, counselor din po ako ng UP Student Council. Tapos naging strong member, naging president of Society of Law Students, naging vice president of UP Law Student Government. I clenched my fist. I chanted. I marched and joined demonstrations. Kahit na may date ako sa araw na yon, sumama pa rin po ako sa pagmamarsha. Now, my question did my UP experience turn me into a radical member of the left or a renegade citizen? No, I can say that with all honesty. But my UP experience made me love our country more. And most of all, gave me the, the commitment, the steadfast commitment to uphold the rule of law. In other words, ang nakikapit bising o sumisigaw na baksak ang rehiming di makataan ay hindi nangangaluhugan na siya ay may pusong komunista o magiging komunista. 
If some of the UP students turn left or right or stay in the middle, UP is not to blame. My UP education exposed me to the leftist dogma, to the rightist dogma, to the ideas of the left of center, right of center, and the centrist. Paikot-ikot to sa aking ulo lahat ko yan. But UP became the way for, that became the channel for free exchange of ideas and the confluence of disagreements in thoughts and principles that made me who I am today. UP was never a haven, a haven of ideologues. It was a haven for critical thinkers. UP allowed me to decide on my own based on the, on the shared ideas. Okay? Hindi po ko ako naging terrorista. Naging terror lamang po ako ng teachers, not bilang teacher sa loob lang po ng classroom. Yan po lang siguro ang nangyari po sa akin. But at the end of the day, let PND and UP talk. Let the tradition of honor, excellence, and service be the beacon of the light, beacon of light to guide everyone in resolving this controversy. Hayaan natin matakot tayo sa terror teachers, hindi po matakot tayo sa terror na police o militar. Wala hong business ang terror na militar o police sa loob ho ng isang academic institution. So sa mga scholar po ng bayan, noon at ngayon, ating ipagdiwang at itanghal, ating dangal, Giting at tapang, alang-alam sa ating duty namin mahal. Ang galing naman. Talaga, mapapakanta na tayo, Prof. Butch. Ang galing ni Dean Sol. Samasa, student leader, at ngayon na Dean ng College of Law. Uh, Dean Sol, mamaya ako maraming katanungan, ano, related dyan. At saka talagang napakahalaga ng UP sa buhay ng mga naging aktivista. Terror lang, hindi terorista. All right. Meron tayong isang kapitbahay sa Katipunan, Ateneo de Manila University. Si Dean Luis Dumlao, chairperson ng International Institute for Southeast Asian Studies, uh, Social Entrepreneurship in Asia, I'm sorry, ay may kinatawan ho ngayon si Ms. Anna Tan, director ng Ateneo Center for Social Entrepreneurship o ACCENT. Meron ho silang statement tungkol doon sa mga na-red tag ng mga alumni ng UP. Ms. Anna, can we have you on board, please? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anna Tan. I'm the director of the Ateneo Center for Social Entrepreneurship, and I'm here on behalf of Dean Louis Dumlao. would like to express a statement of support for Ms. Lisa Dakanay, who was included in the list of UP alumni that were red-tagged by General Parlate. So his statement goes, I have had the privilege of working closely with Dr. Dakanay since I became ICA chairperson in 2017. We know Dr. Dakanay as a pioneering scholar, author, teacher, and mentor of social entrepreneurship. Under Dr. Dakanay's leadership, ICA has been in the forefront of stakeholders' consultations and the advocacy of the poverty reduction through social entrepreneurship bill since 2012. She led an ICA action research on the impact of COVID-19 that came up with useful recommendations on how social enterprises could be supported as vehicles for the recovery of the poor towards building back fairer. Dr. Dakanay became the first Asian to be awarded as Outstanding Social Innovation Thought Leader of the Year in 2019 by the World Economic Forum and the Schwab Foundation for Social Entrepreneurship in recognition of her visionary, pragmatic, and courageous contributions to significantly improve the state of the world. Responding to public outcry, the NB Secretary Lorenzana called the red tagging incident of the former UP student leaders, including Dr. Dakanay, an unpardonable gaffe. The list has since been taken down and an apology has been issued. While these are welcome developments, we are worried for Dr. Dakanay's safety because of the senseless killing of citizens similarly red tagged in recent months. We are also worried that the anti-terror law allows detention of individuals and freezing of individual and organizational bank accounts on mere suspicion of being part of a group identified as terrorists by the state. As chair of ISEA, I call on our community to be vigilant in ensuring the protection of an enabling environment to work without fear with partners like ISEA towards fulfilling our mission of, ed of educating the youth to contribute to nation building as men and women for others. Signed, Dr. Louis Dumlao, Dean of Ateneo, John, Ateneo John Gokong Way School of Management. Thank you. All, all right. Maraming salamat, Ms. Anna. Uh, ngayon po, 
Prof. Butch, pwede na tayo mag-umpisa ng questions. Maraming tanong. At nakapila yung mga comments. Offhand lang ang sabi. Ang galing-galing nyo, Dean Sol. Inspiring. Thank you, Dean Sol. Pati si Dean Gani, ano? At si Professor Ted. Parang may fans club. Mukhang hindi nasing ko itong mga estudyanting to, no? Prof. Butch. Salamat, Malu. Meron ako isang cluster ng mga questions na ipagsasama-sama na because they have to do with the idea of of academic freedom and our collegial culture uh, versus authority on the other hand. Ang, ang una kong concern dito, and any one of the panelists can answer this, although for the first one, siguro si, si Maring Winnie ang best na makakasagot nito. Yung, yung, tanong ko, yung, yung unang tanong, yung connection between academic freedom and academic excellence, kasi parang we take this for granted. Kaya nga lang, may mga nag-argue naman na hindi naman necessary yung freedom for excellence kasi maraming mga top-rate universities sa, sa uh, People's Republic of China tsaka sa, tsaka sa Russia na maraming, napakaraming restrictions pero ang dami pa rin nilang naproproduce ng mga, na mga uh, Nobel Prize caliber na mga scientists for example. So how do you, talaga bang requisite yung freedom for excellence? Pangalawa, How do you reconcile yung, yung academic freedom natin sa UP with the fact na uh, pinapondohan tayo ng gobyerno? Ano, wala bang karapatan ng gobyerno? I'm just playing devil's advocate dito na sabihin sa atin kung anong dapat gawin natin kasi sila naman ang nagpapondo. At, at pangatlo, how do you reconcile yung ating collegiality uh, at academic culture with the with the idea na parang we are also in a sense being run like a corporation with a board on top which sometimes uh, 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 creates policies uh, top down for our implementation so it's it's a it's a mass of, of, of concerns but just take it from any angle that that you can nakalimutan ko na yung first question mo and dami mong questions excellence and pardon my senior moment And I, I very much think that academic freedom is connected to academic excellence. If you don't have the, you know, if you are told what you can or cannot think, how can you possibly, you know, expand your minds and make your, and broaden your perspective? You're always going to, you know, hindi, hindi tama ang mangyayari sa iyo eh. And it, second place, I don't... Uh, I don't consider your que your question about the Chinese universities and their Nobel Prize uh, quality. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's based on fact. I mean, you know, uh, if they were Nobel Prize quality, they should have been Nobel Prize winners. Mm -hmm. But so I, I'm not going to talk about that. You this look at look at what happened to the the COVID-19 vaccines. Mm -hmm. You know. The COVID, the the COVID, uh, the Chinese pharmaceuticals, are, are, you don't don't want to release their data or are very late in releasing their data. This is no good. And why is that? I, I because they are used to making sure that the government approves of what the data they release is first. That's no way to run a a business. That's no run the way to run a university. And finally, your third question: What is that about? Yung, uh, corporate board, parang corporate uh, governance. You know, in in my in my presentation, I guess you must have missed it. I said one of the important things about academic freedom is that it is part and parcel of three legs of a stool that uh, that uh, that supports um, uh, uh, higher learning, and the second leg of that stool is is shared governance and i hate to say it but in the university of the philippines i think there's a great deal of slippage in that shared governance as shown by what is happening in the with the, with respect to the college of business administration that is a claim to academic freedom and i, I recall when when emma roman um what, what what was that you know Emma Roman's decision was not upheld by the board with respect to the uh, the um, status of a 
of a professor tenure, given yeah. tenure. I mean, I remember Roman said she should not be given tenure. The, the, there was a whole academic process, you know, that was, it. and then it was overturned mm -hmm. by by a corporate board. No, oh. that, it, you know, the book of Carrie Nelson talking about saving academic freedom. She, he talks about um, he he talks about the the 16, 16 threats, and one of them is really you know the the undermining of this shared governance. You know, it, it's it's not it, it 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 does not take place. You know, like a parang or you know one one big thing at a time, but you know little slippages here and there, slippages here and there, and pretty soon, you know. You 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 come out with a with a situation where you have a dean that has not even been recommended by the by the college of by the college or by the search committee or by the chancellor or by the president. What you know? We have problems with yeah. governance, and we and that's one of the things we have to be. You know, we have to alert ourselves with. I was serious, Butch, when I said that. Um, the professor emeriti are in the best position kasi hindi na sila you know dependent on the university ano ha the, to 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 start this this uh, organization that will be sure to pre to to uh, prevent not only incursions on our academic freedom in the up but everywhere all right Rani, salamat uh, can we bring in some questions from the participants, uh, Prof. Butch? You know? yes. I think to all the participants, to any of the panelists, uh, sabi niya, what can you say about the DILG's move to seek a dialogue with UP in regard to the 1992 UP DND Accord? And uh, merong kasunod doon, could you please comment on Chad Chairman Devera's statement that the UP DND Accord is bound to be problematic? Well, actually, parang siguro, yeah. we refresh la. <laughs> Tita, what are you saying? Hi, so, did you hear me? I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, so, I mean, yung UPDND Accord, I think that was the trigger for the Oblation Forum Statement ng Professor Emerite, ayin natin. Mm -hmm. And now I think uh, the dialogue proposal hangs in the air. It's not really sure when it will happen. But, uh, well, wala, wala sa atin dito yung nasa admin ngayon, kaya admin lang. Uh, kanina nakita ko si Chancellor Fidel Nemenso eh. Ewan ko lang kung gusto niyang sumali sa usapan. Na-quote naman siya ni Professor Monsod kanina. So, yun yung mga questions ano, na current from ABS-CBN, from some of the participants. Tapos, pwede daw bang ipaliwanag? Ano ba yung trigger? but nagkaroon ng UPDND Accord? So, that cluster of question. The UPDND Accord. Kailan magkakaroon ng dialogue? Uh, bound to be problematic nga ba? Paano ba nagsimula? O oh, baka si Ted, alamang history. Ted, siguro familiar. At saka si Professor, si Dean Sol. Yeah. Mga estudyante noon. Pero later pa yata si Dean Sol naabot. Ano? Ted? Or I don't know if uh, si, si yeah. President Emerlinda Roman is on board. Oh, yeah. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Please. Yes. Okay. Hi, Malu. Yes. See you again. Okay. Yes. Anyway, just to give you an idea of how that accord came uh, about, I think it was during the time of. Uh, uh, let me let me turn on my video. I think it was during the time of President Abueva that he felt the need for an agreement because there were incidents of. Uh, uniformed men entering the campus and going straight to the students. That's one uh, situation. Another situation is there were um, elements from the NBI who wanted to get addresses of our students, et cetera, et cetera. So Dr. Abueva felt that uh, we needed an agreement that will, uh, that will define how they can come in, not to limit their coming in, their entry into the university, but to, to uh, come up with rules and policies on how they can come in. They're not prevented from coming in. They just need to coordinate with the UP police. And also during hot pursuit, 
they may go through UP because yung road sa UP is national road. Eh. You cannot really prevent them from entering the university. It's just that it's just a matter of coordination. Okay. Uh, so uh, it was, I think, between Dr. Abueva and uh, President Fidel Ramos that the uh, agreement was finalized and it went on very smoothly. And then when DILG was created, because at the time it was just the PCIMP, so when the DILG was uh, uh, created, there was another memorandum of agreement, this time signed by Rafi Alunan at that time. No? So, Ang na-abrogate lang is the UPBND agreement. I do not know what happened to the DILG agreement. No? Patuloy, patuloy pa rin yun. Patuloy pa rin yun. No? In fact, meron lang akong flash na ano dito, na Twitter feed uh, from USEC uh, Jonathan Malaya. Now, we have no intention of abrogation at Good. present. What we want is to have a healthy discussion with the officials of UP. Right. Uh -oh. So I would go back to what Ted Teddy Te said earlier. I said, why, why, why did this happen at all? And sabi niya, he said something about um, something about the, the desire to control, and that's going to be very difficult to handle. Because you know, gusto nila control ang UP. Maybe uh, imagine pati yung mga artista nga, they want to control. <laughs> All the more, gusto nila kapulin yung UP. So, um, I really do not know if there have been talks between the UP administration and DND, uh, uh, if, whether they're willing to, to reinstate the agreement, although I heard ayaw nila. But there has got to be a way for the two parties to get together because they cannot unilaterally unilaterally, you know, stop the agreement. And I am saddened because you have a chair of uh, the board who seems to be on their side and not on the university side. And the chair of the board is an academic. Yeah. He understands the culture of the university. Yeah. yeah. So that is, it's, it's I, I feel very saddened by that. All right, very good. <laughs> Uh, Professor Emer, uh, daming mga comments ho dito, no? Ang sabi, ang galing ng discussion are e academic freedom if it serves the pursuit of truth and service to humanity. The government should honor this for the greater good. Mabuhay ang mga panelists. Uh, at meron yung katanungan dito na parang uh, eh, yun ho daw pag-revoke ng UPDND Accord eh dahil daw nagiging uh, havens for recruitment ang university, not just UP, but 18 other universities and colleges, recruitment ng mga CPP NPA. Now, I don't know if the Professor Emeriti has had some experience or maybe actual uh, uh, witness uh, state, uh, to, to, to this allegation. Meron ba nagre-recruit? Pugad ba ng recruiter ng NPA o ang, ang UP? Tita Wala, yes. Wala namang kaming nakikita ang mga recruitment booths na tinatayo ang CPP NPA sa, sa UP Fair halimbawa. UP <laughs> everybody's recruitment ground. Ananda Marga, Crusade for Christ. For Lahat ng klaseng mga, mga organisasyon nagre-recruit dito sa UP. Eh, hindi naman namin, natin nakikita yung siyempre yung CC, CPP NPA na nagre-recruit openly. Ano? Ang ang uh, ang trabaho natin dito ay magturo sa mga bata. Bigyan sila ng ng mga ideyang mapag-iisipan nila. What they do with their ideas and their lives is part of being UP, is part of their business of being responsible for themselves and their future. Ano kaya uh, hindi ko nakikitang uh, kasalanan ng UP itong mga sinasabi nilang recruitment dahil saan nagsisimula yan ano can you pinpoint a, a uh, particular moment in time and place where this recruitment happened uh, i i can't you know? so uh, they might as well accuse all universities of this of this uh, of this fault uh, and and believing in marxism as as an idea is no is no crime 
even Harvard has a Marxist club. Ano? Kaya, uh, uh, these are, I think, very, very silly uh, observations that disregard the role that universities play as purveyors of all kinds of ideas. Okay. Can we get the professors also to comment on this? Have you seen, have you witnessed na may recruitment bang laganak? Kasi mukhang yun po yung trigger ng pag-revoke ng UPDND Accord. Uh, I think uh, Professor Winnie and then si Dean Giselle, Dean Gani, meron ba recruitment? So may I speak, uh, Giselle, here, Malu? Okay, apo ma'am. So, ang kailangan Giselle. siguro yung tinatawag nating truth verification or fact check, <laughs> di ba? As a basis uh, for coming to the negotiation table. Check in natin, ano yung basis niyan? And that uh, I think uh, would be the basis for uh, you know arguing the point. So I think Dean Gani can tell us more about how this yeah. can be done. No? Gani, then say yes. Professor Wini. Yes, po. Uh, actually, um, we, kailangan talaga ang mag-present ay ang DND kung bakit nila ginagawa ng itong paratang. We can, in just like any other uh, academic, kapag may sinabi ka, dapat may backup ka. Hindi pwedeng pasaring lang palagi at gagamitin mo na yan na basis. Now, the other one, of course, is uh, this going to be a slippery argument for them because once you say that the university is now saying uh, uh, recruiting uh, communists, ano pa yung ayaw mo ipagawa sa university? Kung ayaw mo bang pa-study to, Kung ayaw mo bang paaral yung dolomite? Pipigilan mo na rin at uh, sabihin mo na rin na may problema ang university. Uh, I'd also like to connect that to the question of Bush earlier na eh, may funding naman kasi sa gobyerno, part kayo ng gobyerno, bakit kayo nagsasabi ng hindi uh, kapareho ng gobyerno? Well, the university stands with all its research, with all its studies. Uh, we have the experts here. We hire all the experts. Um, it's not, uh, and because of that, what they say, we have a modicum of um, uh, truth that they, they are saying. So pag sinabi, for example, na may problema yung Dolomite Project, kahit funded yan ng DNR, hindi yan babawiin ng ating mga scientists kasi doon tayo nag-uumpisa sa may pinag-aralan pinag nila yan, meron silang datos para dyan, at may tinitindigan sila sa kanilang mga sinasabi. Uh, the principle of mutuality, kahit pareho kayo, may respeto tayo sa sinasabi ng university, dapat may respeto din uh, yung mga ibang mga uh, government offices like the DND, dun sa stand ng mga ating mga profesor. Okay, so si, Dean, si Professor Winnie, you were raising oh, your hand. Ano po, alam mo, yes. ba na recruit? Yes, yes. I mean, a friend of mine, this was about 10 years ago, okay. you know, she came to me crying because she mm -hmm. said her daughter was in... Uh, well, somewhere at the university, and she was uh, she had joined a group that was a leftist group, and she refused to come home. I mean, it was a big emotional thing, and she accused a a uh, teacher of being the recruiter, and I uh, referred her. I I don't know what happened. I referred her. I I should have taken a more active role but i referred her to the dean of the of the college i don't know what happened but for six years this girl had you know had been enticed and she went but finally she came back and now all is all is well she never got her degree but she's uh, she's now no longer part of uh, of that group and that's why i i was i was mindful of what butch the lisa said every you know every agency and his brother is trying to recruit up students sororities fraternities you know etc cetera, etc cetera. that's part of the deal and it is up to the student to uh, to find out whether he or she wants to now if that student has been intimidated or has been uh, you know coerced into doing into doing this thing i don't know that's why in my talk a little while ago i said we've got to uh, we've got to look over our grievance 
our grievance procedures. I don't know whether whether these students are being um, are being coerced. I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Fidel. So, uh, see, si Chancellor Fidel would like to weigh in on this. Meron nga tang, yeah. Would you like to give some comments? Ano daw, related na question, ano sasabihin niyo sa mga magulang daw ng mga nare-recruit na pang UP nagiging unfair sa kanila? Although it's been explained, everybody recruits everybody in the uni University yes. of the Philippines. All right. So, Chancellor yes. Fidel? Yes, I just want to echo what's been said. You know, there's recruitment left and right. You know, what we provide it's a learning environment, but we don't take risk. I mean, whatever decisions they make, uh, these are these are mature students, no? They 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 take responsibility for their decisions. But uh, as, as as Bush said, I mean, every group tries to recruit, every group tries to recruit students. Uh, I don't know of recruitment into uh, the CPP NPA, but definitely there's recruitment from the left and the right. No, but these are these are decisions that, that, that students make and we respect their decisions. But for those who say that uh, UP is just a breeding ground of communists, they conveniently forget that UP produces scientists, engineers, educators, doctors. Economists. Uh, teachers, economists. <laughs> artists, mathematicians. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> these these are the people UP is known for. UP produce leaders for almost every field. All um, right. But there's a follow up question here. No, para lang ita nung uh, galing ito kasi sa tawi tawi. The question is, uh, paano huba? Will the abrogation of the UP DND accord have anything to do with the red tagging now of other uh, universities? Will it also affect them, including MSU, uh, Mindanao State University? Kasi parang and dami nang nare red tag may mga campuses sa Mindanao at sa Visayas na na red tag na at uh, in danger of being uh, invaded also what are you thinking the universities have come together uh, chancellor fidel on this point dapat mag-usap-usap na tama yung sabi ni secretary lorenzana what is so special about up that's right what's so special about up we should have the same agreement for all universities so that academic freedom and all universities are respected and protected. And it's about yep. time uh, we, we, we talk with other universities because our concerns are their concerns as well. All right. And uh, there is, yeah, someone supporting the proposal of uh, Professor Bonsod that there should be an association of university professors and yes. uh, so, so that they could actually be an important voice in deliberations on issues like this. At uh, dapat daw yung Professor Emerita ay malaki yung role sa mga advice sa mga ganitong usapin. All right, Professor... Gusto ko nga paano mangyari, Malu, ay ma-redtag na ang lahat ng pamantasan sa buong Pilipinas. Oo nga. Kasi para makita nila na talaga namang sa lahat nangyayari ito eh. Ano? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hindi, hindi so, unit ang UP sa ganyang, ano, sa mm -hmm. ganyang bagay. Ang gusto kong itanong kay Professor uh, Sol at saka kay Attorney Ted. Ang sabi nila, mukhang ang universities ang last rampart of open free thought and expression and dissent. Hindi ba, and, and of course, there is the government self-imposed deadline to end the communist insurgency by end of term of President Duterte. At mukhang ang tutok daw ngayon ay yung mga pamantasan kasi dito na yung huling uh, rampart o huling uh, pilar ng dissent. What are you hearing, Dean Sol and uh, Attorney Ted? Kasi mukhang mas... Uh, I'll defer first to my younger uh, colleague. Uh -huh. Go uh, ahead, Dean Sol. Younger than me. I will defer first to Ted and Ted. Mas okay. bata po siya. Ako daw muna. <laughs> Kauglay nung madaya to si, sa madaya to si Sol. Eh. Sige, ako na muna. Uh, I, 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 have no, I have no idea about that deadline, no? But uh, I think it is pretty clear that the what's going on now, no, the abrogation, the consistent red tagging. red tagging, which is apparently now formally a policy, a formally a national policy that is actually supported by a budget, no, because of this task force that has been created, and is apparently uh, beyond review, 
by execute by the executive branch because no one has basically taken to task uh, those people who have been red tagging even though you know kita kita naman na nagkakamali na no mali mali yung mga nire red tag nila no uh, <laughs> that policy i think is being laid out as an as an experiment in relation to UP na pag nagsucceed ito sa UP eh talagang roll out yan no so i think it becomes important that uh UP uh, assert that hindi pwede mangyari yan. No? Uh, kaya tama lang na talagang iigiit yung academic freedom, igiit yung institutional autonomy that is in the charter of UP. No? It is recognized in the charter expressly, passed by Congress, no? allowed where Congress expressly recognizes the institutional autonomy of UP, academic freedom, both as a right and a responsibility of UP. No? And, and I think, important rin that in solidarity with other universities, other universities, not just SUCs, even private universities, which are already you know, on the list of, of red tag entities, no? that yung iigiit lang that uh, these provisions no? that, that minimize, eliminate red tagging, no? Uh, this uh, all of this profiling no be be mainstream into law because otherwise hindi talaga uubre yung academic freedom under under that environment so i think there have been initiatives by by congress to 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 pass laws uh safeguarding no uh institutional autonomy and academic freedom but perhaps one thing no one thing that they can do preliminarily dun sa ating mga kaibigan uh, alumni sa, sa Kongreso, no, both in the Senate and the House, no, uh, is to inquire no, into this national policy of red tagging. We know that people are doing it. No? Wala, wala pakundangan eh. They do it no, outright. No? Uh, mabilis, sila mag, mabilis sila magpahiring dun sa mga iba't ibang bagay. Pero ito mismo, no, uh, direct threat to academic freedom, direct threat to freedom of thought, freedom of expression, ni hindi man lang yata nagpahiring no uh, on this particular uh, instance so maybe that policy which comes you know directly in conflict with the constitutional guarantee of academic freedom to all institutions of higher learning so hindi lang nga UP tama si Chancellor Fidel hindi lang UP ang special lahat dapat special because that's what the constitution says no this policy is anathematic to that to that guarantee of academic freedom eh. and uh, there are two ways to go about it. No? Pwedeng pumunta sa korte, pwede, pero pwede rin mag-act mag yung kongreso. At kung mas mabilis sa kongreso, eh dun gawin. If Congress simply legislates it into, into all the charters of the SUCs and the UP or makes it av available to all universities, then, you know, then it's, it's there. Hindi, hindi, na, hindi na pwedeng unilateral yung gagawin. No? So I, I think uh, I, I, would, I would frame that my answer within... With, uh, within those lines. Okay. Vinsol? Okay. Alam nyo, yung, yung sinasabing red tagging, medyo asiwa talaga po ako doon kasi sa mga abogado, dapat evidence-based. Dapat may ebidensya bago mo sumihan ng isang tao. O yan, komunista yan. Anong ebidensya? Wala naman ako nababasa. Pangalawa, it, ano eh, it belittles the constitutional, our constitutional right, right na yung presumption of innocence. Mababasa mo na lang isang umaga, red ka na pala. Hindi mo alam kung bakit ka red. Tapos, incumbent na ikaw ang mag sa sarili mo, hindi mo alam bakit ka naging ganoon. So, sa akin, ang mga nangyayari, lalo na ko sa academic freedom, ano ho yun eh, sabit-sabit na ho, bakit nagkakaroon ng pagbabawalang bahala sa ating mga constitutional rights? Kaya kung hindi ho tayo maninindigan, Eh talaga ho, mare-railroad ho yan. Kasi natatandaan ko ho, nung panahon ho ng diktadura, pag against ka dun sa ang dating presidente, no? ang sabi ka agad sa iyo, makakaliwa ka. Kaya takot na takot ang nanay ko noon. Kasi pagka sumasali ako, you know, yung, yung panahon ng diktadura ng Marcos, ang, ang thinking niya, red ka na. Hindi, hindi ka red. No? Naninindigan ka kasi may paniniwala. Now, meron lang ho ako, hindi kanino ko pag gusto sabihin kasi may binanggit po si Sir Butch na dahil nga ang gobyerno ay nagwa-fund, meron pa silang karapatan sabihin paano gawin, ito ang dapat gawin. 
I cannot but help, you know, but compare that with me sending my children to school. Dahil da, ba akong nagpupondo ng kanilang pag-aaral, pwede ko kung gusto nilang mag-abugad at sabihin ko, hindi, mag-medicina ka. Hindi ko sila pwede, hindi yan saklaw eh, ng kapangyarihan ng isang taong nagbibigay ng pera. Yung taong binibigyan mo ng pera, kaya mo yan binibigyan para maging magaling, para lumawak ang pag-iisip. Ngayon, kung sasabihin mo, ito, binibigyan kita ng pera, pero ganito ka lang mag-iisip. Pagsisikil yun, hindi yung pagtulong isang pamamaraan ng pagsisikil yan na hindi katanggap-tanggap sa loob ng isang universidad. Okay. Salamat. Hey, Butch, medyo kapusa tayo ng oras. Paano po? Mag-last round tayo. May isang tanong na baka pwede nyo nang tutukan ng ating panelists at uh, ngayon. Galing kay Mariel Macapia, knowing all these threats to academic freedom, what could an ordinary alumna like me, myself do? And I guess the citizens at large, ano? to be in solidarity with UP and all universities, state universities in the country. So siguro mag-parting shots po tayo. How could we make this issue common cause for citizens? Should they care about it at all? Ano po yung magagawa nila? Parehong round tayo. Siguro panghuli si Prof. Butch mamaya. Si Prof. Winnie muna. What can people do? Why should they care about this? Oh my goodness. <laughs> If it is not obvious after we have all discussed it at this point, you don't deserve to be a UP alumna, all right? <laughs> but, but I am saying that the Ouch. best thing that can be done is to communicate your displeasure and your discomfort with what is going on. Where do you communicate it to? Your favorite radio station, your, your, your favorite newspaper, whatever it is. Because you know what? This is going to be a communications battle. Eh? Because that is what happened in, 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 with McCarthy in, 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 in the 1950s. You know, everybody got, you know, it was, it was red tagging all over the place and everybody was afraid to say, no, I'm not, or, you know, or no, she is not, etc. Professors were afraid to defend their, their colleagues because they were afraid to get red tagged. We cannot allow that to happen. So this early, we have to say, you know, you are wrong. You, 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 are, uh, you are destroying my, my alma mater. Whatever it is you want to say, but say it. You have to say it out loud. You have to shout it. And Butch, I'm, this is the third time I'm bringing it up and I will continue to bring it up. We've got to get everybody together. Oh, All right. Big task, but a very important task. Okay, see, Professor Giselle? Yes, um, I'd like to um, well comment that the UP Alumni Association is represented here. So yeah. it could uh, take a strong stand regarding this as a academic freedom in the university. Pero tama sabi ni uh, Madam Winnie, kailangan natin i-communicate properly. And I always say, uh, again, uh, quantitatively, yung incidents ng uh, uh, mga activities sa UP na sinasabi nila uh, laban sa society, uh, hindi documented. Or kung meron mga ilang ganyan na i-influensa, anong porsyento ba yun ng faculty or ng estudyan? 0.001% ba yun? On the other hand, ano naman yung mga kabutihan na nagawa ng UP, lalo pa during this time of COVID? Di ba? Bakit pina, pinapahirapan ng UP, lalo pa ngayon, kung ang dami nating kung kailan, ang dami nating heroes during COVID? And let me cite some examples. Kasi uh, ito talagang, ano, uh, you can check the facts. For example, yung PGH, ano ang ginawa niya during COVID? Paano nag-respond yung ating PGH director para noon makontain niya yung COVID at ma-treat niya ang kadat karamihang mga pasyente yung pumupunta doon? O yung uh, PGC, Philippine Genome Center, anong ginawa noon? Uh, Nag-recruit yun ng napakaraming estudyante at graduate students para nga tulungan ang uh, gobyerno, ang DOH, ang RITM para mag-RT-PCR. Alam ko yon kasi yung isang RA ko, estudyante ko, uh, overnight. Uh, na doon sa RITM tumutulong. Humingi sila ng tulong sa atin. O yung UPLB, umingi rin ng ano, uh, panay ang uh, appeal para noon ma ma maging ano na silang RT-PCR testing center pagkatapos ng PGC at ng UPNIH. 
o kung hindi, yung ating mga computational scientists, yan nang sila uh, Joma Rabahante at si Mahar Mangahas, hindi nga ba sila yung tumutulong sa pagdedetermine ng r naught at ng uh, flattening of the curve? O, yung namang yung MSI, yung aking home institute, uh, yung courageous uh, statements ng MSI tungkol nga sa dolomite uh, ano, uh, white sand, eh, nakabase naman yon sa uh, research at expertise ng mga ating mga scientists sa MSI. Marami pang iba. Uh, ngayon, yung itang, isang ating doktor na tumutulong sa pag-test uh, at validate ng uh, antigen test, si Dr. Michael T. So, uh, maraming tayong mga example na ganyan. At uh, I think, uh, yun ang dapat i-highlight natin in terms of uh, uh, proportion of good things that we can uh, establish are uh, being a uh, contributed by UP versus itong tinatawag nating speculation. Alright. Speculation or destabilization. And all should be communicated uh, effectively no? to the public. To the public. Yes, sir Butch, meron pang... Salamat po, Dean Giselle, uh, Professor Giselle. Si Dean Gani? Um, sa akin po, idagdag ko na lang. Um, we're not really just talking about individuals here. We're also talking about individuals using a very uh, prevalent um, tool such as Facebook. So important din po na ilabas ng mga intellectuals, ng mga taga-UP, ng mga nagmamahal sa academic freedom, yung kanilang position at hindi lang pabayaan yung mga bots, yung mga trolls, at yung mga nag, uh, may pera para bumili ng space, espasyo sa Facebook. Um, ang ma 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 mamayani doon sa diskusyon. Important po kasi to because one of the things that allow in the recent um, years and months uh, this type of thinking is because people would have access to information only through social media. And if we don't become active in social media and put our positions and analysis there and discuss things like this, uh, we, it will be very difficult to get to them, especially now that uh, uh, we still have social distancing uh, things in the, uh, in effect. So, importante po na magsalita tayo bilang, sa ganito mga forum, sa uh, social media, at kung merong mga pagkakataon, magsama-sama at magpakita tayo na naninindigan tayo para sa academic freedom. All right, Thank you, Dean Gani. Professor Ted? Nakamute ka po. Dagdag ko lang doon sa sinabi na, no? uh, dangal at husay, giting at tapang. I think that's how we can help. Uh, UP has given us the tools, the skills. Uh, in, during our time in UP, no matter how long or how short, whether MRR ka or child prodigy ka at natapos ka na mabilisan, no? within that period of time, UP has given us the tools, the skills, the attitude, the disposition, the, the critical thinking, which now we are called to apply. How do we do that? Uh, it's a war on truth right now. So yes, we need to stand for that. We need to say, anong basihan mo? No? Pag dun sa sinabi mong yan. No? It's a war on accountability. No one's being held accountable for all of this and truth this in this information and so if we are in a capacity to do that to hey, make people accountable hold them accountable administratively legally you no know, hold them accountable for their untruths in the public in the public forum in the in a public sphere then we should do that you no know? it's a war on excellence you no know? uh, arguments that are mediocre are being bandied around as truth you no know? papayagan ba natin yun no that's what we believe in honor and excellence no it's also a war on honor because right now people you know there's there's so much lack of integrity that's going around no uh, and and so gusto ko lang i-frame yung kayang gawin ng bawat individual UP alumni alumna no doon sa apat na salitang yon no giting at tapang dangal at husay wag nating kalimutan yon very good thank you okay si professor sol din sol Oh, um, I concur sa lahat ng sinabi ho ng nauna ho sa akin. Pero konting pagdagdag. Paano ho tayo makakatulong? Think, act, and, like, and live like a UP student. Be aware of what is happening. Know the facts. Analyze. Make a stand. Love the truth. That is a tatak ng UP. 
we honor excellence by living the truth we honor we honor not only excellence but integrity when we honor the truth we were wired that way and therefore we should act that way all right thank you very much uh, dean sol si professor butch Siguro magparting siya ka tapos may announcement ako yung susunod nating webinar na sigurado babantayan ulit ng ating mga participants. Professor Butch? Papansinin ko lang na ang kapag tataka, ang ginagawa ng pamahalaan sa ating mga guru at mag-aaral ay isang ginagawa naman ng pamahalaan ng komunistang China sa kanilang mga mamamayan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What can we do? The best way to the best way to defend academic freedom is to use it. Express yourself, wherever you may be in this world, whether you're here or in San Francisco. Uh, UP lives in you. The university is is in you. So you do not have to be in UP to to exercise the, the spirit of academic freedom. All right. Uh, maraming salamat, Professor Butch. May announcement po kami. Ito pong webinar series na to ay ilang linggo. Magtutuloy-tuloy tuwing Webes, 1 to 3 p.m. Sa susunod ng Webes, ang atin pong nakaschedule ay Usapang KP, Kalayaan sa Pamahalaan, sa Pamantasan, Mga Artistang Bayan, Pak Ganern. At medyo confirmed na po tayo sa mga sumusunod na panelist natin, si Dr. Nick Chongson, Dr. Glessie Atienza, Dr. Cecilia De La Paz, si Mr. Chris Miliado, si Toyn Imao, yung gumawa po ng barikada, at si J.K. Anikoche. So wag po ninyong kakaligtaan. Tuwing Webes, 1 to 3 p.m., ito po ang Usapang KP, Kalayaan sa Pamantasan. Hatid sa inyo ng mga organizers na sumusunod. Ang University of the Philippine System, UP Office of the Vice President for Public Affairs, led by Vice President Neni Pernia, UP System Alumni Relations Office, UP Information Technology Development Center, TVUP, at UP Alumni Freedom Project. Kasama po doon yung mga na-red tag na alumni na napagkamalan. So ako po si Malu, mga has, at nagpapasalamat po kami sa lahat ng ating panelists at mga dumalo, hindi lang dito sa Pilipinas, kundi sa ibang bansa. Meron po yata echo seminars na gagawin ng UP Alumni Association sa San wow, Francisco. Wow, fantastic. At uh, yun hong challenge ni Tita Winnie, organize the university professors. Meron hong closing credits, makikita ninyo yung mga tao sa likod ng production na ito. We were live on Facebook and YouTube. At pwede pong manood muli doon sa mga medyo nahuli sa panunood. Maraming salamat po sa ngalan po ng ating mga organizers at panelists at resource persons. Magandang araw. Thank you. Thank you.